push through and punch through with a vision with passion a vision with passion hello everyone welcome back to purpose by design not by default we are so glad that you are here Oh, I love you. Amazing, amazing people, viewers and listeners. Uh, just thank you so much for showing up. And again, you are going to be just blessed that you're here because my guest today is someone I consider to be a friend and incredible, incredibly knowledgeable in so many areas. And you're probably wondering, well, what areas? Well, uh, Sandra is going to explain all of that to you, but I hope that you have, like I do, I hope you have a notepad with you and something to write with, because this is one of those podcasts that you are going to want to take notes, because there's a lot of wonderful information, including her very own podcast on nonprofits. So I just gave a little bit of a peek in. So Sandra Cheney. Welcome to Purpose by Design podcast and radio show. Yay. I am so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're excited. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm excited to hear what you have. But why don't you start out? Tell us, who is Sandra Cheney? Who is she? You know, I love that question so much because we always start out with titles and yeah i want to say that but i want to say first of all i am someone who loves to laugh i love to have fun i discovered that i like to cook now <laughs> i am love i am peace those are the things that i am what i do is i am a empowerment coach Mm -hmm. I am a nonprofit consultant strategist. I am a seven times best-selling author. So I'm gonna write, those are the things that I do. But who I am is someone who just loves people, who likes to have fun, who, you know, likes to watch Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Movies. laughs> those are the things. Uh, that's who I am, um, not what I do. I love that. And speaking of watching Hallmark, okay. So in Minnesota, we have been hibernating with Hallmark and whatever other TV shows or channels, Roku, right? You know, we have been hibernating with that for months. You know, we we made it until almost November, in, in, in middle to the end of November this year, before there was any real significant snow or really any mm -hmm. bitter cold. But when it comes, it comes in Minnesota. And then unless you're a winter sports person, which I'm not, my winter sport is to watch the winter. You know, <laughs> really good at that. So we have had our Minnesota thaw. There's leaves on the trees and everybody is coming out. Mm -hmm. And we've been hibernating, as you and I spoke about before we began the broadcast today. What What's it like for you when it's springtime. Do you experience that where you are at? And what kind of things do you like to do once spring has sprung? So, yeah, I've, I don't think we've had as much snow as you guys. I mean, we've had some snow. They said we were going to have significant snow. It was a bust. <laughs> we didn't have a whole bunch of snow, but we did have cold. And I'm not a winter girl either. So I hibernate and, you know, and buy, you know, fireplace or something like that. But when spring, and I, love nature so when spring hits i like to get out in nature i like to walk i like to do the hiking and things like that i'm not doing that nicole you can't put on enough clothes for me to, <laughs> I'm with you. to go hiking but when it does get warm i love to go sit by the water because i'm a water girl i love to walk i love nature i just like to get out and just yeah. be amongst people so that is for me what I, I go hang out with my friends, just the simple things that I don't get to do when it's cold because I'm not coming out the house. <laughs> it's so relate. So you're coming out of the house. <laughs> yes. For the first time in a while, so to say, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, I get it, Sandra. My husband is so faithful to take our dog to the dog park all winter long, and he'll say to me, do you want to go? And I just look at him. <laughs> you know the answer to that. Uh, 
is there snow on the ground? Right. What's the temperature? Yeah, right. no, you know, and once it gets to a certain place, I'm there, I, you know, but it has to get there first, yes. right? No, I'm with you all the way, 100%. <laughs> well, I have a few questions that we're going to run through together, and I am going to make you big and me little so everybody can really see you if they're watching. <laughs> so one of my questions for you, and I'm reading this, everybody, so I'm looking down if you're watching. As a conqueror of domestic violence, sexual assault, homelessness, and an abusive marriage. These are your words. These are things you've been through. See, I told you all that are listening and viewing. I hope you have the paper and pen ready. Listen to this. You said, I use my life experiences and lessons to create sacred spaces. I love that. And moments where my clients will feel safe, loved, and comfortable. That's huge when you've been abused, to have that safe, secure, comfortable feeling where they can fully express their truth, to be completely set free from their hidden secrets and challenges in life. Okay, so I didn't need to know anything else about you, Sandra, once I read that. If I and I know so much more about you, we've gotten to know each other a bit. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't know anything else about you, that would have been reason enough for me to have you on Purpose by Design. Would you expound on this for us today? Sure. So I never in my life felt comfortable, you know, growing up. I grew up in a household where abuse and alcoholism was prevalent. So my biggest, I say nemesis, I like, I use the word nemesis, is trying to control, trying to control my peace, trying to find a space where I can feel comfortable and, and trying to figure out what that was in the midst of chaos. Sure. Because when you, when, when, when you are uh, being a victim of domestic violence and sexual assault, your life sometimes is chaotic. And you're always going here and to and fro. And it's, it's like you can't figure out what to do. So control becomes how you try to make peace with things. When in actuality, the more you try to control, the more chaotic it becomes. Yeah. And I had to learn for myself how to let go, how mm -hmm. to be at peace, how to know that I, by being at peace, I am in control. You know, That's by so letting good. by letting it go, by just letting it go, and so I just remembered sharing my story for the first time with some women in a in a uh, halfway house. Uh, my very first time sharing my story, and I was as nervous as can be because I'm going, are they going to receive me? How can I share something? with them that's going to make them feel comfortable with sharing something back with me sure. and i just and, you know I, and this was i was volunteering i i come from i worked in corporate america at that moment at that time i had come to this halfway house and they're looking at me like like yeah okay there's nothing she can tell me and they were all like you know tense but th what i did was i opened my mouth and i was just me like I just shared from my heart space, just my story. I didn't make, I didn't have big words to, to the point where a fifth grader could understand me. And now people laugh when I say it, but it's true. I talked from that level and you could see their shoulders coming down. You could see like the room, just the energy in the room shifted because I was just to me. I put, I acted like we were in a living room somewhere or you know how, you know, when you have your family come over, you all want to sit on a big table, just having a conversation. We yeah. had a conversation. Oh, that's so beautiful. That was the beginning of me realizing, just have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And that in itself makes women comfortable when it's just you having a conversation, no pretense, no nothing. And when I did that, they started opening up and they just started sharing their story with me. And that is how I started. Every time I do a workshop or anything like that, I'm just having a conversation because I want to set the tone in the room. Okay. Um, because sometimes I'm not in control of how the room is going to be because that is the organizer. So I have to come in and set it so that the women know 
that this is a safe space. And so I just do it by just how I present myself. I loved what you said there. And I just want to, I want to circle back to that, that you set the atmosphere or the attitude in the room. That is a huge talking point right there because a lot of people will walk into a room and they don't understand the setting of the atmosphere and they'll like just jump in and just start talking or start sharing and the guests don't feel that endearment, right? Mm -hmm. They don't feel that pull or, uh, well not or, that's really leaving the setting of the atmosphere uh, to others instead yes. of creating it yourself. How do you create that? Create that atmosphere. I may, you know, come in and stop and say something funny. You like, I, like I will, you know, in a minute, or, or do, uh, or I like to dance. So I may come in and, you know, I may, have, if there's a DJ or a musician or something like that, I may come in and just start doing some kind of dance or something. I may just start singing. I can, and I don't profess to be a singer, <laughs> you know, but I will do something that will make them see that oh wait she's a human being right she's not here she mm -hmm. really is we're the same right so i'm going to do something that's going to make you feel because i can because first of all i'm very i'm empathic i'm i'm, I'm empath i i feel so yeah. i'm already feeling the atmosphere in the room and i'm already asking god even the night before to tell me Oh, um, to, to, to help me know who's going to be in the room. And mm -hmm. most times God does answer. And when I get in there, I'm not like, oh my God, what did I just walk into? I sort of already know what I'm going to be walking into. And so I prepare myself because I know that I am an atmosphere changer. Mm -hmm. And so I'll come in and I'll change that. I'll change it. Even the hardest person who I know is gawking at me, like who she thinks she is. By the time it's <laughs> over, I've even shifted them. That is so amazing. Those are powerful words. I am an atmosphere shifter. And you have that to believe that. Is powerful. Yes. yes. Yes, you have to believe that. And because you do believe that, when you take your prep time, your quiet time, your yep. prayer and meditation time, you're seeking that. Like, how yes. do I bring this atmosphere, the sacred space in? That is powerful. I hope you all are catching that because every one of us has the ability to be an atmosphere changer and shifter. That's something divinely put in us to do that. And to realize yes. that is power, right? Yes, wow. it is. And can I, and I, and I, and I, and I want to say that each and every time I've had women come up to me and say, you made me feel like I was just sitting at your mm -hmm. kitchen table having a conversation. Sweet. Or you made me feel like I was sitting on your couch and we just was, and we were having a conversation. They, 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 and they, and they thanked me for that. And they would, and then, you know, they will come up to me and share their stories. Or sometimes they would share, you know, if, if I'm permitted, what they needed to share with me. But every single time I've said that. And I remember asking God, wow. Okay. And I said, what is that all about? And that's when God told me, we all can shift the atmosphere. I didn't know about atmosphere mm. change years ago. But that's when God said, because you have the power. Yes. <laughs> you yes. have to tap in. You have the power to change the atmosphere mm -hmm. and to leave women feeling like this was a sacred space for them. Right. And that beginning switch, like turning on the light switch, could be something as simple as doing a dance. I mean, that, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's it. But you were prepped and ready for that on the backside. The backstory there is you recognize that you have take time to to assume the wonder woman position and you know mentally emotionally spiritually right and mm -hmm. and maybe even physically <laughs> standing in that space and then entering in and realizing that for that next period of time all eyes are yes. on you 
all hearts are on you. What a valuable moment in time that is. And then to own it doesn't just mean to be a powerhouse, although you are a powerhouse, you definitely are. But to own it means to realize atmosphere shift and change, creating that space for their mm -hmm. healing. Mm, that is mm. beautiful. And can yeah. I just add one more thing to that? Too? Absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm not a, uh, cause I, I, people don't even know this about me, but, I, but, but, you know, I, I am a, a minister. I, I am ordained. However, I'm not a pulpit kind of girl. And so that for me too, I, I can sense can be a block for some people. So I'll take the mic and I'll come down. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I have to, you know, when I've been in churches, I have to, I have to be in that space. Now I'm, I'm also very respectful because I, so I, I understand, you know, but I, it's like, because of that, I can feel. And because I can feel, I will come down because at the end of the day, I'm like, no, that's just a title. I'm a person. And I need you to understand that I am a human being just right. like you. Right. And being a human being makes you makes us real. Yes. And that we're willing to be transparent and come close and yes. not have this huge separation, right? Which yes. um, will prevent people from really receiving. And being an empowerment coach, transforming people, Yes. You, 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 of course, you want them to see and hear your story, which you've shared a little bit of it with us here. But to know that now I have this story, but I can relate to you. Yes. And you can relate to me. Let's go. That is really powerful. Um, another part of what you do, which really has piqued my interest, is the nonprofit strategist. Uh -huh. This is a big deal. You know, a lot of people don't understand what nonprofit means. They just yes. think that means there's no money. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so you're right. a nonprofit, that is you don't have anything. There's nothing there for you. What in the world would a person need a strategist for to be broke? <laughs> right? And right. it comes Sandra, she's going to change your world of thinking on nonprofit. So Tell us what and what does this mean to be a nonprofit strategist? Why would a nonprofit need somebody to help them strategize? So I help nonprofits, somebody who wants to start. So I help start, I help them build and I help them fund. And as a strategist, as a consultant, we I say we because I, I do have a team of people. We help you assess. Uh, where you are in that process and then provide strategies to help you become successful okay. because nonprofit does not mean poor. You can, <laughs> you can, it does not. You can make a profit. I'm going to say that again. You can make a profit in, 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 in the nonprofit world. You can be successful in it. People do it all day long. You're not away. Goodwill, Salvation Army, the NFL, the NHL. I, Yes, you. There are many successful Catholic charities, many successful nonprofits. So we help you um, find the right strategies to okay. first of all have to make sure that you have the right programs in place, that um, you get the right funding, um, and that you align with your, your your mission and vision aligns with that of the funder. That your board of directors align with you because they need to. <laughs> You know, all, right. we help with all of those things and all of those things are important to the end result, which is the money. You know, mm -hmm. I, I host a podcast called The Profit in Nonprofit because the, the, the word profit means to me, not just the, the money is the end result. The profit are the internal workings of your nonprofit, your, your staff, who, who is your board, where are your programs, who is your target population? What content do you have? All those things. Why are you doing this? That's the biggest thing. Why? Because your why tells your story. And the biggest thing you have is your story, which is what draws money to you. So we help with all of that because you can make profit. You really, really can make a profit. You're not supposed to be poor. It's not. <laughs> I love that. So it's not a it's not taboo or a bad word no. to say profit in a nonprofit. No. 
It's not. If, if I mean, because here's here's the here is what people I think uh, nonprofit owners forget, uh, Pamela, is that you are a business. Yes. You're, you're in the business of making money so mm -hmm. that you can impact the community that you want to serve. You're in the right. business of telling your story so that you can draw the donors to you. You're in the business of marketing. This is for profit and nonprofit. This is what we do in a for profit business. It is the same thing in a nonprofit. You are a business first. The right. only difference is how you do your books at the end of the year because you are a public charity and you have to make sure that you know um, that your accountant you and your accountant are showing the irs what how you are doing what you're doing with this money that right. is the only thing but you are able to make a profit so you're able to make a profit you don't just have to give it all away nope and you don't have to be concerned that if you are uh taking some type of a, a salary that somebody's going to come and say that you home? can't do that you can't do that you got to give it all away to wherever okay so <laughs> let me just address that yeah please <laughs> why would you want to be the the executive director or have uh, a program director or have staff to work for free <laughs> how do they eat <laughs> How do they pay their bills? How yes. They, how, how, okay. <laughs> no, you know, you are supposed. Okay, the IRS. Everybody understands that you have to pay yourself, your staff, whomever you have, in order to run these programs. You yes. have to do that. The only, like I said, the only difference is at the end of it. You cannot show that, you, you know, okay, so you know how for a for-profit, you show a ledger. You show your profit and loss. Not in a nonprofit. In a nonprofit, you show where all the money is going, even if you still have money there, but the money is allocated to staff or is allocated to your programs or is that, it's allocated somewhere. Got it. So the allocated of funds is important yes. to nonprofit. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have any funds, y'all. Right. It means you have to have it marked and, and explained and listed. And that's why yes. somebody like Sandra is so imperative uh, to connect with and learn from her because it's a whole nother world opens up to you when you realize this as the leader or the developer or the creator or whatever of a nonprofit, this is a big deal. And so I wanted to camp there for, for a few minutes because to me, it was a big deal as I have been learning and growing in that myself, mm -hmm. uh, having the background for years in ministry where you give it all away um, and looking, you know, Apostle Paul made tents, right? And and I'm all about you got to make your tents and do what you need to do. But I also know the scripture says that the that the that the um, minister is worthy of their hire. So that yes. just doesn't mean in a church setting, everybody, come on. But whoever it is that has this vision, this dream, and they're wanting to help others through it, um, there are ways to make those make those uh, nets that might not necessarily mean though that you have this side nonprofit and you got to go work 40 50 60 hours somewhere else right there are ways and strategies i guess is what i'm getting to yes. because as the as the person that is spearheading that and creating the plan and bringing on staff you are worthy Yes. And maybe even more worthy in some arenas because your whole goal is not just profit. The goal is to help others. And I believe there should be reciprocation back to the mm -hmm. person and people that are pouring their heart, uh, their sweat and tears into that. So anyways, that's yes. my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but, and, uh, so and so just, I'm mean, just to add on to that. I mentioned Catholic charities. Catholic charities is known across the United States. Yes. Catholic charities. Okay. okay. Um, and, and they don't, you, they're not poor. Mm -hmm. They have staff that they are paying to run these programs. 
they go after grants and things like that but they have it's, it's you know it's, it's like i want to say multiple streams you gotta have multiple sources that your money comes from it's not just grants multiple sources this is how you're not poor because you have okay. multiple sources but they have um offices all over the united states mm -hmm. with programs that they are using to help impact the communities that they're in the same yes. thing with goodwill they have stores where do you think the money's coming from we some of us like thrift stores we some yeah. of us go into the goodwills and we buy stuff yes so it's like multiple sources right uh, good so i i'm i'm just i want i wanted to say that because I think that people, and I use Mother Teresa too, because people will look at Mother Teresa and I'm going, okay, Mother Teresa wasn't poor, y'all. Don't get it twisted. She, <laughs> she, did, she did what she needed to do, yes. But trust and believe, there is no way Mother Teresa could travel around the way that she did. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and not have some kind of money somewhere, some sponsorship, some, inv some investor, something right she did I, I'm, I, just like jesus carpenter and so i'm just saying that no one in the bible didn't say we're supposed to be poor it does not say that that's so, right no you have to uh shift that mindset as one of my mm -hmm. mentors said there is no box get rid of the box and that's what my non my podcast is about is to get you to throw away the box and to yes. if, if you can dream it it is possible for you to have it even as a nonprofit founder, Woo! because you are in business first. Yes. First. Did you guys hear that? You're in business first. That's a big deal. And I am thankful that you shared all of that because I, I do believe, I, no, we don't just have to believe it. We know it. We can look around and it's overlooked and uh, undertaught. And there's a lot of wrong stigma that surrounds all of that. And, you know, you have just peeled back the top layer a little bit today and, and showed a little deeper, different vision. Yes. So those of you out there starting nonprofits in nonprofits, looking for a profit in the nonprofit, you need to <laughs> reach out to Sandra, just like I am doing. All right. Another amazing thing. Talk about, OK, multiple streams of income. You are a coach, you are a speaker, you are a nonprofit strategist, you are a seven time best yes. selling, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, seven time yes. best selling author. I mean, I, I said to uh, Sandra before we started, I said, I, I, you know, I bow down to you. <laughs> you know, and I, I, that awesome i mean seven times that's quite an accomplishment so i would love it if you could tell us about how you did it because i'm sure there were times when you wanted to quit times yes. when you wanted to give up but also one of your recent quotes which is from one of your books that you are re-releasing i believe mm -hmm. is woman women within it's an inside job yes. and I wrote that down. I loved that quote. So I know I rambled off a bunch of stuff there, Sandra, but can you just kind of take it and put a bow on it? Tell us yes. about being this accomplished author. Tell us about all these books, How what your journey has been like. It's exciting. So it, um, it's interesting because I never, ever thought that, first of all, that I would be an author uh, ever. I didn't think of myself as a writer, let alone a speaker. The speaking came first, obviously, because of my story and, you know, working in a bad at women's shelter. But I believe everything comes full circle. Mm -hmm. No matter where you start uh, and, you, and you look at where your life is right now and you go, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. It's full circle. It's all connected. Yeah. And I remember my very first book that came out was titled uh, Give It To Her, A Gift of Healing and Restoration. And it was mm -hmm. a 15 years in the making because I'm like, I don't write, I don't wanna write. I, it's, I just, I'm like, God, what are you gonna be write about? And it was about my own healing, my the beginning of my healing journey uh, with domestic violence. And 
having having mama wounds because you know there are those of us that have mother wounds and i talk about these things in my book and i'm like god really and i just remember getting with some with some people who encouraged me that was what how i actually started writing was because somebody encouraged me to write and tell my story you know as as much as i could tell it and i'm going okay so i surrounded myself with people that really encouraged me to do that and it's not always easy to find people like that but as god would have my god you want me to do this then i'm asking for help because i cannot do this by myself and thus began my journey of writing and uh, my second book was titled the woman within is an inside job because healing uh, is not outside of us it's inside of us and while we go to therapy and we do all those wonderful things and um to to get on this road of healing we we still what i call have embers within us and god reminded me that even though i have these embers um still burning everything i need is already in here i have to learn to always tap in because i'm always looking outside of myself for everything when it's already inside of me that's how the atmosphere shift that came about you know with with me with god because it's already in me that is how the nonprofit, uh me being a nonprofit strategist coach came because i've been doing the work it was already in me oh, the yeah. speaking in me all this is already mm -hmm. in me so tapping within and the next thing you know people are asking me to be co-authors in their books so i have three of my own i'm working on number four and then i'm a co-author I think in about say about eight or nine other books I'm a co-author in. I want to say about eight books I'm a wow. co-author in. Yes. So and I am working on number four for me, but I'm now I'm co-authoring to others as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> How do you keep them straight? <laughs> yes. And, and so so what 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 that told me was that I am a writer. Yes. It is in me. So who am I to deny what God has put in me? Mm. I need to use every single gift that he has given yeah. me. And thus comes the multiple streams because God placed it in me to do. Right. So I write, so I speak, so I do the nonprofit consulting part because it's about service. It's about impacting the community. It's about women like me who heal and uh who got help uh, because of me being a, a conqueror of domestic violence and thriving but i had to go somewhere to get help right sure. and so it's uh, you know these nonprofits who may have counseling services and things like that and it's just near and dear to my heart because it comes full circle yeah it's not i'm doing something that's outside of me it's already within me and that's why that book is called and this is this is actually the book this there is it the is. third edition of it. I've uh, this is my third edition that that came out uh, uh, February, and uh, in hardcover, but also in the paperback because God said this book is still important because we forget that everything we need is already within us, mm. and I had to remind myself even during this period of COVID, you know, and having to pivot a little bit that I still yeah. have what I need within me to even shift. As yes. God is shifting. So that is the third edition of on, this book. Yes. And the first time it came out when? 2010. 2010. 2015. Okay. And and then and then now 2021. Okay. And the hard edition or the, the third edition hardcover. Yes. Is that out now? Yes. It's out now. It yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Third edition. I would say that that book is powerful if you're on the third edition of it. There's lives being changed. Wow. And that information is in the description, y'all, so you can get that book. Yes. And, uh, and be, be, you know, be changed and healed and what you set free, but you can share it. Buy it for somebody else, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there's always someone that you can, um, that you can bless with and you can give it to them. My father-in-law does that. Him and his buddies, he's 92 years young, Sandra, and him and his buddies, they do Kindle, but they also do book books. Uh -huh. There's, I think, three or four of these guys 
all in the same age bracket and they buy books and then they read them and they put them in a box and when the box is full it gets shipped off to the to the next guy so um can you imagine how big and heavy that is they right. oh they, they do that so my father-in-law was sharing that how you know they'll send so they rotate the books around uh in that group of however many of them that there that there is that's and, awesome though yeah yes. so you I see that you can pay this book forward you can get it for yourself and bless somebody else with it create mm -hmm. maybe a little group like that that you share that knowledge with each other that's beautiful so do you have, that, I'm going to add something to that. I, I am working on a workbook. So there's going to be okay. a workbook to go with this um, book that people can, you know, within a group themselves or, you know, uh, because the book really is about you and about understanding who you are and about defining the you that's within you. <laughs> yes, I love that. The you within you. I love it. The real you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The one that needs to be free to be me, the one that needs yes. to be to get out of that that shell that it's been in for so long. Yes. And and uh manifest the purpose by design. Thank you for saying that because that was going to be an, an add-on question was what's next? Do you have another book in the works? And it looks like you have the workbook in the works. That's yes, awesome. the workbook is come was gonna come out because I, you know, it's interesting when my publisher uh, finished with, you know, getting it, you know, edited and all these other things. We were on the phone talking and she said to me, you know, you should think about a workbook. And I only, I chuckled because God told me that in 2010, Pamela. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just started laughing and I said, okay, God, I guess it's time now, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so I say, that is interesting you would say that. I see because God spoke that to me in 2010. And I did do a beta. And you know how you, and, and you go, oh, it went well. And then you go, oh, well, it wasn't for me. And I put it to the side. But you, you, things that are for you, you can't keep putting to the side because God's going to bring it back. Just, and yep. so you, either you do it, you know, or God's going to be like, okay, their lives. For me, it's about whose life is uh, attached to this? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Whose life? So yeah. whether it's a nonprofit founder, whether it's someone who needs this book or whether it's somebody I need to coach through, whose mm -hmm. life, if I don't do this? Sure. So That's I so said, okay. So working on the workbook. Yes. Yeah, that is so powerful. There are lives waiting at stake. There's yes. lives. And that is what you heard in your heart from heaven. There's lives at stake. Yes. There's people waiting. Yes. That's exactly. powerful. That's powerful, Sandra. That, yes. that, that, that really is. Stop and think about that, all of you that have been putting off writing that book, putting off uh, that workbook, putting off that, you know, uh, that album that you're going to record and sing on, whatever it is, that cookbook, <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, that, that business. Course, that business. There are people yes. waiting. And you might think, well, I've just been thinking about doing, you know, like having a, uh, you know, a laundromat. You know what? There's people want to wash their clothes. Come on. <laughs> right? It's yes. about serving others. There are people that are waiting you know, one night Les Brown said on Power Voice when we were in class there, he had uh, an, a, one of many epiphany moments. We know he has many. And mm -hmm. he said that he was resting because he had had a long day and that he heard God tell say these words, tick tock, tick tock, the clock is ticking. Mm. And he immediately got up out of bed and did the live that he didn't think he was going to do. And I'll follow back on that TikTok in just a moment. But here on the call, there was a um, a young man that was attending the Facebook live that was ready to end his life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know if, um, you know, the live notification popped up on his phone or whatever, but he Ooh. finally ended up in that session and it saved his life. Mm. Isn't that powerful? Now, yes. coming back, and, and, and Mr. Brown says that the man uh, told him he had a gun to his 
chin. You know, I'm, if you can't, you can't see it, but I've got my finger up underneath. Mm -hmm. That's where it was. It wasn't like, well, I'm contemplating it. It was like chunk, chunk, gun. I'm ready to go. And, and his life was saved and spared at that moment because of that. Now, when he heard tick tock, the clock is ticking. He was thinking, you know what? I don't get this time back. You know, um, there are lives hanging in the balance. There are people I need to touch. There are voices out there that need to be encouraged to speak. And mm. that was what got him out of bed. And, and also like mm -hmm. I'm not gonna this time back again. Right. We have an allotted amount of time. Sometimes that allotted amount gets extended, <laughs> you know, by 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 his yes. grace. But we have this period of time called life. Yes. What are we doing with it while we're here? And yes. that was kind of that mode of operation that he was in. I can't stay in bed. I've got today. I'm not promised tomorrow. I'm going to go make an impact today. There's voices that need to hear me today. And then that and the outcome of that was amazing. Yes. So as, as you're saying that you were hearing there's lives, there's lives. I just want to echo that to the, to all mm. of the audience, the viewers, the listeners today. Do you understand? There's yes. lives waiting. So don't, don't, don't hesitate. Don't wait any longer. Just go for it. And I just want to encourage you with that. Um, from your unique perspective, Sandra, what does purpose by design mean to you? I was created for a purpose and mm -hmm. it was by design. I have my own unique fingerprint, footprint, yeah. voice. <laughs> that is unique to me and it was designed purposefully for me to use it in the world for yeah. me to have impact in the whatever that impact is whether it's in your family whether it's on a job mm. whether it's even in a grocery store mm -hmm. wherever but right. it's unique to me and um and it's purposeful and it is by the we are all unique by design if you yes. when we're all not the same that i mean when you think about how god created something out of nothing he mm -hmm. there was this void this darkness and out of it came us out of it came all these beautiful different things by design yes and for me it's like when i when i, when I saw that and i thought about answering that question even for me it was an aha even in that moment pamela mm -hmm. because Reminding myself that I am enough as I am. Yes. Because I was designed this way purposefully. Yeah. Wow. That's you know, what that means to me. That is so powerful. Purpose by design. Listen, everybody. It means you're enough. You as are you more are. than enough as you are. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yes. today you're enough. Yep. In uh, this moment. In this moment. It's moment by moment. Right. Mm. But I'm purpose in this moment and I am yeah. enough. So whatever I'm doing in this moment, I'm still creating mm -hmm. because I'm unique. And yeah. And so for me, just to even answer that, like I said, it was an aha just in that moment for me that, girl, you are enough right where you are. Mm, I I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. You know, I've asked everybody that question that's been on the program and I haven't had anybody say it means I am enough. That blesses me. I love that. Yeah. You don't have to achieve a certain level and status from heaven's vantage point to be enough. You are enough yep. right now, right now, because you are a masterpiece because the yes. master is in you right where you are right in all of the craziness the chaos you yes. are enough and yes. that's why you have a purpose and you are a purpose by yes. design i yep. love that sandra that is yeah. so cool well is there anything else that you feel that you didn't get a chance to share that you would like to say and then also um, please just share how our listeners and viewers can find you and it will all be in the description y'all. So you just need to look in the description and you'll be able to figure out how to follow, follow her and get in contact with her about your nonprofit or 
whatever the case may be. So, um, and so I just, yes, I just want to remind you and remind whoever is going to listen to this that you were created for a purpose you're here for a purpose that you are not a mistake right. that the mistakes you made were not mistakes they were lessons because mm -hmm. <laughs> we all had to learn how do we grow we grow through the lessons that you fail forward yes that you are still loved that you are a masterpiece created for this time right and so get about creating whatever that is if you are an encourager go out and encourage because that's who yes. got think about it what is that you love to do go do that because you were created to do that right now and i always tell people every my quote from me is everything that i do and offer the world comes from a deep place of love because we were created in love go do that because somebody is waiting on you so to wow. reach me <laughs> yes to reach me um you can visit my website at sandrachaney.com and on there just so you know i do have a free 25 minute consultation under my coach, co coaching services so please feel free to set up a time to speak with me it's right on my website under the coaching services link you can also reach me on Facebook and IG at Sandra Cheney Enterprises. Um, so I'm on Facebook, IG, and then at, on my website at SandraCheney.com. Beautiful. That is amazing. Sandra, thank you so much for being here today. I know that everybody here has been uh, encouraged, empowered, challenged, and a lot I have a lot more wisdom about nonprofit. That's for sure. <laughs> yes. Thank you Thank for you. having me here. I am honored. I love when I get a chance to serve because service is the biggest thing that's near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. And you just served us a full meal deal supersize today, honey. That was <laughs> great. Oh, and thank you to all of you that are here that have tuned in to, to watch, mm -hmm. to listen. This is why we do this. Uh, it's not, I mean, I love to get together with Sandra, but we don't have to, we don't have to make a broadcast out of it. We can just uh, sit and visit via Zoom or StreamYard, yeah. right? But yeah. this is why we do it. It's because of you. And so I have a, a favor to ask you. Would you help us spread Purpose by Design? Would you help us spread Sandra's message and like or subscribe? Depends upon where you're viewing this at or where you're listening and then share it. Purpose by design means what? I am enough. Yes. Somebody needs to hear that message today and, and you know who that is. So share it. Let's put the message out there that these type of positive and empowering programs are needed. Let's get the algorithm to point us in that positive direction in the world that we live in. So thank you again for being here, everybody. And remember, you're here on purpose, with a purpose, by design, not by default. Now go out there and continue to be the salt and the light everywhere you go. Bye. <laughs>